Oh, Millie, look how dirty you've gotten. Dirty girl. Oh. <clears throat> G'day, frothers. Um, it's your, it's your bolter down under here. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what kind of drill you need to bolt a rock climb. So, what kind of drill do we want to buy for bolting rock climbs? Uh, I get asked this question pretty often, so I decided to just make a video and try to explain things a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> so, we want a hammer drill, right? Uh, well, no. This is a hammer drill. You can even see the little hammer on the side there. Up on the selector ring, you can set it to hammer. So yeah, that's what a hammer drill is. We actually don't want one of these. Um, this is also a hammer drill. We don't want one of them either, even though it's got the little hammer uh, hammer mode on there. Uh, that is not really going to work um, because this style of drill, <clears throat> this style of drill just has a, uh, a, a kind of cam mechanism inside the clutch there. Cam being a device which turns rotary motion into uh, linear motion, uh, and they Basically all it does is cause the chuck to rattle back and forth. Uh, that's not really going to do much. Um, so these ones, they've just got a normal uh, jawed chuck on there, so that's a keyless chuck. But you can see, you can see the, uh, the jaws there that hold the drill bit. They take a standard shank drill bit. Um, it does have the masonry chisel point on the top. But that is basically only going to be good for brick and concrete and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so unfortunately you probably got one of these at home, uh, but that's not what you need. You need a whole different uh, tool for this. In fact, a different class of tool called a rotary hammer. Uh, in this case, it's an SDS rotary hammer. Uh, rotary hammer means um, it's got the drill part, the turns, but then it's also got a hammer mechanism inside there. It's a pneumatic hammer which hits the drill bit um, <laughs> from the back, and so it's actually in the same class of tools as like those big jackhammer things like demolition hammers and breakers and things like that. So this is what you need. Unfortunately, the thing that you probably already have, it's not going to work. You've got to buy uh, a different tool entirely and these tend to be pretty expensive for tools. Um, I think they typically cost more than your, your normal um, sort of power tools because they, they, they actually have two mechanisms inside. They're sort of like two, two tools in one. You'll notice on here there's a gear selector or a mode selector, so in this case you can do hammer only, uh, sorry, hammer and hammer and drill. So it's turning and hammering, you can do drill only, or you can do, oh, these Milwaukee ones are so hard to turn, or you can do hammer only. Oh, you bastard, come on, come on. Like that. Um, so yeah, the, these are a different class of tool entirely to your normal hammer drills. Um, SDS is, uh, is, is the, the chuck size or the chuck type. So SDS means something in German. Uh, I can't pronounce it. Uh, I think they call it special direct system or something in English, but it means something else in German. Um, and it basically takes these drill bits. So uh, these are 10 millimeter shank. So SDS and SDS plus are the same 10 millimeter shank. Oh, one of them's got more slots on it, but you know, they both fit. It's plus is just an improved version of, uh, of standard SDS. Then you've got SDS max, which is 18 millimeters. And that's like, you know, a big giant breaker, breaker hammer sort of tool that you definitely don't want. Um, SDS drill bits have got so, as opposed to the normal normal drill bits with their normal shanks on there, SDS drill bits have the slots and the uh, little retaining uh, slots there. So the, the chuck, in, chuck inside here will grab those two with a ball bearing, while these rails here allow it to slide uh, back and forth as it hammers. Um, you'll notice there's, it doesn't really turn, all it does is that. And so once you've clicked it in, the way you remove it is by pulling that back. That releases the little ball bearings in there, and then you can slide it out. You don't need to don't need to do any turning on it, like like in your standard drill. Um, 
you can get different configurations. Uh, there are D-handle ones which are long. Um, personally, I'd go for this shape just because it's gonna be more balanced and it's gonna fit in your pack a little bit better. So uh, which rotary hammer should, should you buy? I mean, honestly, you just buy this one. It's great. It's a real, real good drill. Um, but around here, we're, we're, we're about reasons, not rules. And so rather than just tell you which product to buy, uh, I'm gonna explain what kind of features you're actually gonna look for. Um, so firstly, what you want, believe it or not, is not a big drill. I used to have a 36 volt monster because we've got a lot of hard rock around here and I thought, yeah, you need a, a big drill to, uh, to, to drill the hard stuff. And it turns out I was dead wrong. I wasted a lot of time lugging this thing around um, when I really should have just gone for one of these uh, smaller ones, you know, from the start. And here's the thing. Big drills are for big drill bits, okay? You don't want a big drill. The biggest you're ever likely to, to, to use in rock climbing is 14 millimeters. This one can do 26 millimeters. Um, so unless you unless you're regularly doing things like this all the time or even bigger, you do not want a big drill. You've got to carry this thing. You've got to carry this thing up the mountains and then Jumar with it and you know climb with it in your pack. You do not want a big drill. In fact, you want the lightest drill you can find. Believe it or not, the little ones work. This little 12 volt Makita, it weighs less than two kilos with the battery and boy, it works great. I feel like I've wasted my life, well, the last five years with the giant seven and a half kilo drill. I should have gotten one of these from the start. Uh, so the next thing you want to, to get is a cordless version, obviously. Jesus Christ, I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, <laughs> How are you going to plug this, this bastard in? Um, well, for, actually, yeah, uh, there, there is a famous climb uh, nearby where I am um, that was actually put up by a bunch of dumbass teenagers who, who did have one of these drills, a plug-in drill, and they plugged a fucking generator and a giant extension cord up to the cliff with them. Um, check out the video. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. A nice, nice piece of uh, climbing climbing history from these parts um, but yeah honestly you, you don't want to do that Jesus Christ don't be a drongo um, so you want you want a, a cordless one uh, I'd say get a 18 volt one which is you know, Milwaukee calls M18 but you know they're big on the tough guy branding so you want a, probably an 18 volt one um, and you know the reason I say 18 volt is because it's really uh, versatile it's a very common voltage it's a good mid-range voltage, um, and you know if if we take a look at the the Makita catalog here, these are all the 18 volt tools you can get. Um, yeah, tons of different shit. So you know if you get a 18 volt system, Milwaukee is the same. Um, fucking what's the other one? Bosch the same. You know, eight, 18 volt tools are really just the standard uh, standard size, and this this can really help uh, inform your decision making. If you think, oh, I need a random orbital sander, or I need a reciprocating saw, or I need a little fucking <laughs> little robot cleaner thing, you know, um, in in terms of brands, just go for that. Go for what you afford, you can afford. Go for what you like. Go for the different ranges they might have. Um, here, here in Australia, Milwaukee is a lot more expensive than Makita. Um, I ended up with Milwaukee just because of like historical reasons. Uh, I also got Makita 12 volt. Um, Maybe I'll explain why later, but um, you know, just get yourself. Doesn't doesn't really matter what brand. Any of the ma any of the major brands will be great. Uh, Milwaukee is definitely good, but here in Australia they are expensive. They are 20, 30 percent more expensive than Makita, which is a brand I like. Um, very common here in Australia. Probably different where you are, but you know, any any of the the, the main power tool brands like Bosch, uh, Dewalt. Makita, um, they'll they'll all be fine. Ryobi, I I don't know. I I think Ryobi's probably all right, but I haven't ever seen anyone use a Ryobi drill. I heard one one group of slackliners once used it uh, in this hard igneous rock we got around here, and it broke. So anyway, um, go for one of just the normal normal drill uh, uh, power tool brands. Whatever you can afford, whatever you like, whatever you've already got. Hell, you've probably got a normal fucking power drill at home, so just just go grab the same one. 
Now, you might see a few guys out there rocking Hilties. Um, honestly, don't bother. You do not need that kind of quality. Like, Hilti is a top quality tool. Uh, there's a few other, like, real premium brands out there. Um, Fine, Best Tool, um, Hilti. Like, honestly, if you're just a weekend warrior, uh, do not bother. You know, they don't have the same kind of range of other tools. Um, they're going to cost you an arm and a leg. Yes, they'll last forever. But honestly, if you're out there bolting maybe 10, 20 climbs a year, any 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 normal tool brand is going to be fine. Um, you know, these things all come with like a five-year warranty nowadays. Make sure you fill in your warranty card. I mean, no one ever does that. But, you know, shit, I've got probably 10 around here that I've never filled in. But in theory, if it breaks after five years, you can get a new one. And that's a pretty good run. Don't worry about getting Hilties, unless you want to, in which case uh, let us know how it goes because I would love to use one. So what else do you want to look for in the drill? Um, obviously, yeah, the weight. I mentioned before, you don't want a big one, you want a small one. I actually went and got a whole new uh, system, the Makita 12 volt system, because I just wanted a really light compact drill. A lot of the stuff, I mean, I always walk, work on my own usually. Um, often remotely, so I've got to fit everything in that bag and every gram, ounce, kilo, whatever, that all counts. So try and go for the um, go for the lightest one you can get. Again, I recommend getting the 18 volt because it's just going to be more versatile and the weight's not going to be that different, but you know, after years of lugging around a really big heavy bastard, I was just in love with the lighter tools once I realized how good the modern ones are. And so you may notice uh, this, this thing says fuel on it here. Um, you you got to watch out for that. A lot of these tool manufacturers, um, they'll use funny funny names or, you know, brand names. In America, everything's a registered trademark. So you got to watch out for that. Fuel, um, if you're getting Milwaukee, get a fuel drill. In fact, I'd just get that one. Um, but what it actually means is brushless. So see that there? Brushless, brushless motor. Um, get a brushless drill if you can afford it um what does brushless mean well uh without getting too didactic about it um it's a modern say digital drill digitally controlled drill um versus an old brushed tool um so this old one ugh, so this old one uh as well as <laughs> having the horrible old nikad batteries um, this is also a brushed tool. Um, it's analog. It's an old technology. So just say, think of it like analog versus digital. Um, what it really means is a brushless tool is going to be a bit more expensive, maybe 20% more expensive. Worth it. Absolutely worth it if you can afford it. Um, because what you get is uh, lighter, more powerful, more efficient. So per kilo, you get more runtime. Per battery, um, you can get 50 to may maybe even 100% extra runtime on your tool if you get a brushless version. I used to have a brushed version uh, of this drill, not exactly the same version, but a very, very similar um, performance in terms of um, uh, all the specs. And that one got about 12 holes per battery. Then I found out how good the brushless tools were, I sold that shit on eBay, got myself this one, and this one gets uh, 25 holes per battery, 25 holes in, um, you know, real hard igneous rock like granite or something, 25 holes per battery, um, and it weighs less than the other one. Like, my God, get a brushless tool if you can afford it. I mean, honestly, if you can't afford the extra 20, 30 bucks for the brushless version, then bolting is not going to be for you. You won't be able to afford all the bloody hardware. Get a brushless tool. Your back will thank you for it. Your arms will thank you for it. More runtime is so important uh, because if you run out of battery, that's a whole day you've spent. And if you're like me, you've only got one day a week, maybe, where you actually get to go climbing, and if you choose that to be bolting instead, you've got to make that day count. Um, my old 36 volt Makita, again, I sold that a while ago, once I started getting into these uh, 18 volt brushless tools, it got like, I don't know, eight holes per battery? It weighed a ton. It was something like seven and a half kilos in the pack. And 
eight holes per battery, I think in a good day I'd get 15 done. Whereas this thing, this weighs half as much in one battery that I'll get 25 holes. Get a brushless tool. Uh, so, you, do you want a three mode drill? Well, sure, um, I recommend getting a three mode if it's, if it's your first drill. Uh, my little um, baby blue over here, which is just two, two mode, that means there's less stuff inside. It's got a simply gearbox, um, and that means the, the weight of the tool is reduced. For this particular tool that I wanted, um, a real, just the lightest one I could find, basically. The lightest possible drill I could get. This one's awesome, but it's only two mode. Sometimes you might want three mode. Um, for instance, if you're drilling out um, uh, recesses for glue-in bolts, you've, it, it helps to be able to um, just put it on hammer only and you know just carve out those recesses. It also helps if you are um, skating around a lot. Uh, you can set it to hammer only, cut a little, cut a little um, divot in there, a little recess, and then switch back to hammer, hammer drill, and then you're good to go. Um, something else you can use use uh, that mode for is basically other stuff around the house. Like if you're doing demolition, if you're pulling out tiles or whatever off your off your floor. Um, Get some chisels. That's a, uh, I don't know what a pretty small one. Um, but you know, if you want to use uh, use the tool for anything else like that around the house, it's great. You know, now it's a oh, got to switch it to uh, hammer only mode. But now it's good for all sorts of other jobs around the house. If you're doing some demo or some renos, like beautiful. Um, hell, I even made some like rock ring type trainer things by just carving out rock found some rock and just carved it out. I mean, that's it's beautiful. So yeah, I recommend you get a three mode drill if it's your first tool or if it's your only tool. Um, a little bit of extra weight, but you know what? It, it's gonna be more versatile and if you're just starting out, yeah, go for it. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention, I'm lighting this video with an 18 volt battery right now. You can get these adapter things. This one's even got a USB charger. And so it means you can actually uh, swap between brands. This is for Makita. This one's a Milwaukee battery, goes on to Makita tools. I bought a whippersnipper, a fucking, what's that other thing? Hedge trimmer, all sorts of tools. You're not locked into one brand anymore if you get these things too. <laughs> Very good. So, <laughs> you want a cordless, 18 volt, brushless, because they last longer, um, three mode, rotary hammer. And you want the lightest one you can get, for obvious reasons. Uh, so anyway, that's my two, Bob. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll scratch his later.